Good morning, I'm Jasmine Anderson. We begin with a search right now for the hit and run driver who killed a man in Suffolk County. Police say 48 year old Natividad Interiano of Huntington Station was hit and killed by a dark SUV. It happened last night while he was crossing Pulaski Road in Huntington Station. Days away from the start of school and there's a delay in many bus cameras on the island. Sherry Einhorn has a story you'll see only in Newsday. If you live in Nassau and pass a school bus with its stop sign out and its lights on, you may or may not get a $250 ticket. Anything that makes it um, an incentive for them to actually stop, I think it's good. It's going to be annoying for people. You're going to get tickets, but you should have stopped anyway. Suffolk opted in as a county with 71 districts participating. NASA left the decision to local towns, which then have to work out plans with each individual school district that wants to opt in. So what that means is this. When the school year starts, more than half of the districts here in NASA will not have school bus camera programs that are up and running. It's, it, it's incredibly frustrating. The Jericho School District is one of them, even though the superintendent tells us their buses have been equipped with the cameras since last summer. No tickets are being generated in the town of Oyster Bay yet, though, because the town and the district still have to hammer out the details. So we are, you know, eager to move forward um, and, and provide that additional layer of safety for, the, for our kids that ride buses. The program is run by Bus Patrol based in Virginia. The president and CEO says violations dropped by 40 percent between December 2021 and December 2022 in Suffolk, which he says proves the program works. Our mission at Bus Patrol is to make sure that children are safe as they go to and from school every day and really to create a culture of public safety and awareness around school buses. The law allowing school districts and local governments to use stop arm cameras went into effect in 2019. I think it's a little big brotherish. Um, I think maybe we might be getting too extreme, but it, obviously the safety of our, our kids are this, you know, the most important thing. So very, very tough call. Bus Patrol says the goal is obviously to get the cameras on every school bus in Nassau County. I'm Sherry Einhorn for Newsday TV. Read more about school bus cameras on Newsday.com. Click get more below the Newsday TV video box. A vigil for the four family members killed in an East Massapequa crash earlier this month. They were remembered in Brooklyn yesterday. 60 year old Patrice Huntley of Flushing, his children, 10 year old Jeremiah, 13 year old Hannah, and his six-year-old granddaughter laid in open coffins while mourners paid their respects. The family was out to get ice cream when a driver allegedly speeding high on drugs smashed into the back of their SUV. Final farewells begin today for a 53-year member of the Mattatoc Fire Department who died in the line of duty. 82-year-old Leonard Llewellyn died Friday. Police say he was hit by a car while riding his bike to a call last week on Route 25 in Mattituck. A wake is today, followed by a funeral tomorrow. Police are looking for the three men who stabbed a man in Riverhead. We're told the 26-year-old victim was attacked yesterday afternoon near the train station. He's expected to recover. And police are asking your help finding this man. They say robbed a Miller Place store at gunpoint. We're told he pulled a gun on an employee at the smoke shop on Wisconsin Highway in April and demanded cash. Court today for the man accused of using a baseball bat to smash a jewelry case at Macy's in Roosevelt Field Mall. Police say Joshua Wilson ran to the jewelry counter Saturday afternoon and shattered the display glass with the bat and ran off. Nothing was taken, but police placed the value of the jewelry he tried to take at more than $370,000. The U.S. Open gets underway today in Queens. Some of the biggest names in tennis are set to take the court at Arthur Ashe Stadium, including Coco Goff. I think it's having like that first round loss in Wimbledon shows that it wasn't really as bad as it could happen. So I'm not going into this tournament worried if I lose early or, or not. I can't really control that result. So I think now I'm going in with a lot more confidence. Should be great to see the first round is today and tomorrow. The tournament ends September 10th.
And there are extra trains to help you get to the event. There is an extra LIRR stop at the Mets Wellits Point Station and three peak westbound trains on the Port Washington branch. The MTA is also adding more subway trains. They're celebrating champions on our South Shore today. There's a victory parade for the girls from Massapequa Park who took home the Little League Softball World Series title. The event begins at 530 this evening at Brady Park in Massapequa Park. The team became the first ever from New York to win the tournament. Congratulations. Your hyper local weather now cloudy today. Highs around 70 degrees, 74 that is. Not really too much sun out there today. Tomorrow rain returns with highs around 73 degrees. And here's a look at your future cast. Rain moves in tomorrow morning and it's here to stick around for a few days. A look at your seven day forecast coming up. Long Island weather is brought to you by the Canine Center. The former Long Island estate of a comedy legend is on the market. Rachel Weiss has a story you'll see only in Newsday. We're here at the former home of comedy legend Groucho Marx here in Great Neck. Do I have something on my face? Built in 1923, Marx bought this house for $27,000. Now you too can call this home after a night at the opera or a day at the races. That's because it's on the market for $2.3 million. Listing agent Abe Canfer recently had some success at the open house. We had young people here who had no idea who Groucho was. And we had people who were here were just because it was Groucho's house and they wanted to see what it looked like. So it ran the, ran the gamut of what we were expecting to see. And Canfer gave out some souvenirs. It's five bedrooms, uh, four full bathrooms. Uh, the square footage of the house is about 3,700 square feet. And that doesn't include the basement and the two-car garage and the size of the property is uh, just about a half acre. Marx only lived here from 1926 to 1931, but he was fond of the home, even sending over a postcard in his later years. At that time, he was uh, performing on Broadway. Uh, he, when he lived here, uh, it was mostly surrounded by woods and farmland and it was like a giant wooded estate. The convenience of the neighborhood and its proximity to Manhattan, I think is what attracted him because he was working in Manhattan. Although the house has been renovated and expanded over the years, its history is treasured by the community. The history of Great Neck has a lot to do with like live theater and actors who have lived here. And Groucho Marx is probably one of the most significant historical figures. Rachel Weiss for Newsday TV. Nice. Read more about the Groucho Marx estate on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. From biking to beer, museums, and waterfront dining, this pet-friendly village is a great place to relax. Macy Eglin takes us to Greenport in today's Destination Downtown. Welcome to Greenport, a charming little village on the North Fork. Greenport is very pet and pedestrian friendly, but the best way to get around here is on two wheels. Here at NoFo Bikes, you can rent an electric bike for the day, making getting around a breeze. <laughs> Whenever my family, when we would travel, we would always rent electric bikes and go on tours and see things that way. So Kathy brought the idea to Greenport. They opened up last year, offering hourly and full day rentals, plus a guided tour with a farm to table lunch. I do a historical tour that goes over the history. And when we ride through the town, you know, those houses were all there over 100 years ago and they're still there today. 
Take a ride over to the landmark Greenport is most well known for. This carousel at Mitchell Park has been around for a century and it was recently renovated. And part of the fun on this carousel is being the first one to grab the brass ring. Silver again. And if you do, you get a free ride. I've been coming here and it's just so much fun picking at a horse and riding it, trying to grab that golden ring. Greenport is also home to several museums. Plus, there are so many local restaurants here that Long Islanders know and love, offering unique menus of all different types of food. And many of those restaurants are right on the water. End the day with a nightcap at Greenport Harbor Brewing Company. This right here is, is where it all started. They're celebrating 14 years this summer but this is kind of where it all began. Talk to me about, you know, what this place must mean to you guys then, since it has expanded so much yeah. from this little spot. Yeah, this is kind of uh, our heart and soul here. This original brewing location is now primarily used to experiment with new flavors in small batches, and their menu is always changing with the season. We just started brewing our Leaf Pile Pumpkin Spice Ale. That's a crowd favorite. It's a classic. Yeah, that is, that's really a classic. You know, the pub used to be a gathering place to bring the community together, to, to have a good time together, and we still see ourselves as that. We're very family friendly. It's a great place to relax. Plus, they showcase artwork that's for sale from people around the region. There's a really interesting history here, and you can feel it, and uh, I think folks are proud of the community, and we're proud to be part of this community. Reporting for Newsday TV in Greenport, I'm Macy Egland. For more on Destination Downtown Greenport, go to Newsday.com, click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. When you're covering the courts, it's paramount that you get your information from a trusted source. I feel that at Newsday here, we're documenting Long Island history every single day. Newsday, covering Long Island like no one else can. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Happy Monday. Thanks for watching. We'll leave you with a look at your hyperlocal seven-day forecast.